Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Tom Turner. I'm the lead pastor at Praise Family Church in Mobile, Alabama, and I am thrilled and excited that you're joining us for this very special program. We have something that we really think a lot about, and that is the church and how we relate to it. In fact, over the next few weeks, we're gonna be talking about the family business. And it's just how we relate as people of God in the church where God's planned us. We hope you'll be joining us every time. And in fact, if you'd like more information about Praise Family Church, Stay tuned at the end and we'll tell you more about how you can be more connected in what we're doing. Well, good morning, church. It is great to see you here today. Let me start off with some news. I am not Ken Blunt. And uh, if you came here today expecting to hear Pastor Ken, uh, he did get snowed in in Oklahoma City. And he will be here with us next week, he and Miss Trudy. So sorry about that. But anyway, my name is Jeremy Patrick. I'm part of the pastoral team here. You heard from our lead pastor earlier, Pastor Tom Turner, who was receiving the offering. And, and normally this is his deal and what he does. But in January, he's asked several of the staff and stuff to come and just uh, believe God and, and bring a word to the house for the season. And so since, uh, you know, we know that that's coming every year, usually I'm, I'm prayerful towards the end of the year. Lord, what do you want me to say? And then, you know, sometimes uh, people get snowed in and you have to get ready in a hurry, right? So anyway, that's what we did this week and it's been exciting. So thank you for joining us today. And thank you for watching online or later on the Kingdom Builders Network or Holman Correctional. Can we welcome everybody who's watching virtually today? Thank you for joining us. I know we've gotten calls and people from hospital beds or living rooms on vacation. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. It means something to us that you're here. So thank you for that. Well, I'm going to bring you a message as a part of this launch into a future, launch into your future series. And today that message is called Passion for Jesus. Is that okay with everybody here today? passion for Jesus. And if you need the notes, you can find them there on the uh, Praise Family app. Clip on, click on sermon notes. They're there. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. I know we prayed a lot, but let's pray for the word today. Amen. Father, we love you. Lord, today we ask for impartation. Lord, we ask for manifestation of your spirit. Lord, we ask for eyes of understanding to be enlightened. And God, we pray that we would leave this place changed forever in Jesus name and everybody said amen and amen okay so in our church we do a lot of mission trips we call them global expeditions and in 2011 I went on a mission trip a global expedition to South Africa with the church the church goes to South Africa a lot but that was my turn my time was in 2011 that I went first and only time in Africa we're doing a lot of good ministry did a building project ministered to kids at a camp and we went on safari, somebody. You know, we went on safari in Africa. That's bucket list. If you hadn't done it, you got to come sometime. It's so awesome. We get into uh, this 70,000 acre game preserve. That's a lot of acres. Any, anybody go hunting? You know what I'm saying? No hunting. This is a preserve. All right. So, anyway, we're there at the preserve. It's incredible. And, uh, and it's got, we load into this. A big Jeep kind of, you know, I don't know what you call it, some kind of bus thing they're going to take us through. But it's got open sides. And, and so, you know, you're right there. Nature's in your face, right? And, and we get there, and the guide is loading a gun. And he tells us, this gun can pierce elephant skin. And my question was, are we going to need to pierce elephant skin? You know, while we're here on the, on the ride, I didn't know what was happening, right? Because I'm, I'm so used to, like, not being in Africa, not being there in the wild. And it was incredible. I mean, we saw herds of giraffes. I mean, so many giraffes that you get tired of looking at them, right? And the zebra are just running, and the gazelle, and the impala, everything is just everywhere. The hyena grabbed a rabbit and snatched it up in his mouth and ran across the road. It was just, wow, we're in the wild, you know? It was incredible. The thing that got me, though, was the hippopotamus, right? Not what you would expect. I know. I wasn't expecting it either. I think that's why it snuck up on me. The thing's just loafing there in the water, and they're like, if you'll look out here to your left, you'll see a hippopotamus. I'm like, look at that, hippopotamuses, you know? 
and, and that's cool. And all of a sudden, I want to say it roared, but I think the monster just yawned. You know what I'm saying? It just opened its mouth. Rawr. I mean, all the hair on the back of my neck, my arm, it's got chills, right? Like, this thing is going to kill us. Drive, drive. You know, like, I have not been so scared before in a moment of just being there in nature, in the wild, thought, oh my gosh, you know, I found out later hippos are like the, the number one killers of people like in Africa. They're so dangerous and wow, it's just, you know, it was just so real. It was so raw. There's nothing like it. The problem with that is though, is I have a little daughter named, named Charity. Beth and I are blessed. And, and so the time came for us to take Charity to the zoo. And so we go to the zoo but now because of Africa, I'm spoiled, right? We go to the zoo, and Charity calls everything a dog. You know, it could be a rhinoceros. She's like, look at the dog, you know? And so, like, we go to the dog, and, and we're just, we're like, it feels like forever far away from the animals. And there's fences, right? And there's glass, and we're like tapping on the glass and trying to get the bear, you know, to, to move or something. We go to the lion thing, and the lion's like all skinny, you know? He ain't eating no zebra, you're right, you know, he's eating kibbles and bits or something, you know, he's not, he's not eating a healthy diet, and, and he's got a fan, and they said the lion likes to hang out there because there's a fan that blows on him, this is a diva lion, you know what I'm saying, this is an influencer lion, he's not the real thing, he's not going to get up and roar, he doesn't even know how to do that unless YouTube is on, right, he this isn't the real deal. It irritated me. I mean, I'm bothered by it, right? Because now that I've been in the wild, it's like I can never go to the zoo again. Come on, somebody. And, and so when that happens, you have to understand that it's like a, a letdown. Like I'm seriously bummed that I can't enjoy myself there. And, and so I want to, I try to, but then the bear in the bear exhibit literally threw up, right? Right. And when the bear threw up, I'm like, I'm done. I'm done. This is over. Taking charity, and we're getting out of here. There are times in our life, and I think often, if we're not careful, that what happens in religion is that we get stuck in the zoo. And we make a decision about our lives and about Jesus, and we don't mean to, but we want to play it safe. Our natural desire is to have everything under control Everything calm, everything collected, nothing that's going to push us, nothing that's going to challenge us. We long for comfort in our lives. And so Jesus is calling us out into the wild. Jesus is calling us to do big things. Jesus is challenging us. Jesus wants us to step out. And we want to put up a fence because it feels dangerous. But I would like to submit to you today that if you ever get a taste of living life on the wild side for Jesus. If you ever get a passionate encounter with the Holy Spirit, if you ever have a moment where God gets a hold of your life and it changes everything forever, if you ever get a taste of that, you will never be content in the zoo of religion ever again. In fact, I wrote this down. This is in your notes. It says, once you've come face to face with the living God, you'll never be able to settle for religion. There will be a longing in your life to return to the place of intimacy with the Father. So this year we're talking about going deeper. That's our theme. Pastor Tom said it last week, what is it? It's deeper. It's more. It's bigger. It's greater. It's further. So I want us to look today at Ephesians chapter 3. If you have your Bibles, if not, it'll be on the screen or in your notes. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 17 is where we're going to start. This is the Apostle Paul's prayer for the Ephesian church, for the church as a whole. And sometimes it's called the Ephesian prayer. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17. The scripture says, then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And you may have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. And may you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Yeah. Isn't that incredible stuff? The Bible says God wants you to have a revelation of his love. 
And Paul said, no matter how deep you go, there's deeper still. No matter how long you think the love is, it's longer. No matter how wide you think the love is, it's wider. No matter how far you think it goes, there's more to God than you have yet seen. There is more to come than you have yet seen. Come on, you need to wake up with that. Do you hear me, balcony up there? I'm telling you, there is more to come than you have yet seen in God. There's more. But the more is on the other side of the fence. The more is on the wild side. The more is going to be the safari and not the zoo. The more isn't playing it safe. More is about letting the love of God change who you are and transforming into somebody else, into the image, the Bible says, of Jesus. That how we are is not all right. And I think if we're not really careful, I mean really careful, church, I mean so careful that we will begin to put up fences in our life to the passionate pursuit of God. And the parable of the sower says it's, it's the lure of wealth, it's the desire for other things, and it happens slow. And all of a sudden we wake up one day and we realize we are numb. And we do not know, we know sometime a long time ago we were passionate for Jesus. But if we're honest today, as we look at ourselves in the mirror, we say, we don't know where that went. And I don't even remember what it felt like, but I know this isn't it. I know if I'm being honest, I'm in the zoo, I'm behind the fence. I know there was a time when it wasn't like this. Or maybe you're here today and you say, I've never been there before. I've never had that encounter with God. I've never been passionate for Jesus. And I understand because I've had to grow in this and had to learn about my relationship with the Lord. I've had to develop passion. I had to get saved. And so I want to do something that I've never done in our church before today. Well, I guess first service, I can't say that. Second time, right? Second. I've never told my testimony in our church before. I don't think that was intentional, just never did in, our, in, in this service in our Sunday morning. So I'd like to tell you that today if that's all right. Is that okay with everybody? So listen, uh, growing up, we were in this church, and my family's been here for a long time, and I was homeschooled. And where are my homeschoolers at? Any homeschoolers in the house? All right. Woohoo. All right. Yeah, that's not, not good. Anyway, uh, no, I'm just kidding. We have a homeschool group now, and uh, that was weak homeschool group. All right. And uh, listen, I love homeschooling. We have one. We, we, you know, we give it two thumbs up. But I was homeschooled before it was cool, right? Somebody said it's still not cool now. All right. But it was less cool then, Okay. It was less school. People didn't know what that was. You'd say homeschool, and they'd say homeschool. Is that, is that a new school that they built? Some, no, it's, it's not. It was, it was something different. I also had the unfortunate reality of uh, I've done everything before it was cool, right? Uh, I played soccer. Um, this was 20 years ago, you know, and when you play soccer 20 years ago, they thought it was a girl's sport, you know? And so people would say, soccer's not cool. I missed the bus on cool soccer. Everybody's wearing soccer jerseys from European teams and all that. I missed that boat, right? Soccer was not cool when I played it. And so <clears throat> because of these things, you know, that's nothing particularly wrong with soccer or homeschooling or anything. But it's like it was a little bit of a, it always bothered me a little, you know. I just, I wasn't feeling like I was one of those people. And it, it had, it bothered me. It weighed on me. And so, you know, I had friends in the neighborhood growing up. Anybody, the neighborhood friends, somebody, come on. And, you know, this is back before you had headsets and, uh, and gaming things. And so you didn't have friends on my headset. You had real friends, not in the metaverse, you know, real people. And uh, we used to ride bikes and stuff like that. And we'd play in the woods near the house. Anybody do that growing up? You know, those are the good old days. I know you may not know about that if you're young, but that's all right. You're spoiled. You're no, I'm just kidding. Anyway, so... <clears throat> But listen, we had the good old days, and so we were out there, we play in the woods, and one day, my friends started picking on me about being homeschooled and playing soccer. They hit that nerve, right? And, and so they said, you're weird, you're weird, you play soccer, you're weird homeschooler, you're freak, you know? And I got angry, and this is welled up inside. So I bent down, and I picked up a rock, right, a big rock, and I aimed for the face I can still see the little old pimply face right now. And I, I aimed that rock and right at his face. I missed because I was homeschooled. I didn't know how to throw. But I, <clears throat> maybe I could have kicked it with soccer, right? But I, I missed. And 
And but they got angry, obviously, as you might would do, because somebody threw a rock at your face, and so they surrounded me and they began to beat me up. Now we we were young, you know, we're 11, 12, 13 years old. I was 11, and, and so these guys, you know, we were start. I started the fight. I can't really get mad, but but still, you know, they they beat me up pretty good. Guy had a big piece of firewood. I remembered it. Conked me over the head, right, right here, and and I passed out, conked out, woke up. They were gone. You know, they're like, oh, we killed him. You know, run for it. But anyway. <coughs> uh, Still my friends, because that's how I went. But so anyway, they they caught me with this piece of firewood. Woke up, had ants all over me. I've been bit because I landed near like a ant bed. Come out of the woods, you know, upset and everything. Got blood all over my face. My sister Miranda, who was up here playing, she earlier she was freaking out. You know, he's bloodied up. You know, he's been beat. You know, it wasn't that bad. But <clears throat> but that day, something happened on the inside. I can trace it back to that day. There was a woundedness that happened in my life. I got a wound because of that. It became like that is the stigma of my life. I'm wounded. I'm weird. There are problems, right? That became an issue. And because of that, I got angry. Now, the Bible says that anger gives a foothold to the devil. So when you get angry, you now, it's like the devil has his foot in the door. And no matter how much you try to close that door, so long as you continue in that anger, You now have a foothold open, and now there's a problem. There's an open door in your life. And when you open the door to the devil, bad things come in. Now, some of y'all may know me now, and you say, you know, I can't imagine you raging or throwing stuff. Some of you say, I might can't. No, but, you know, it's like, but I'm not that way anymore. This was a long time ago, okay? So, you know, 20 years ago, things were different. But I began to rage. I began to get so angry breaking things, I mean yelling and screaming and raging, intensely raging. And so when that happened, I began to have demonic voices that began to speak to me. And I began to hear demonic voices. One of the reasons God's given me such a great compassion for these demonic people who struggle with this kind of thing is because I was one of them. And this is what those voices said to me. You're not worth it kill yourself. You're not worth it. Kill yourself. Day after day after hour after hour. You're not worth it. Kill yourself. You're not worth it. Kill yourself. You're not worth it. Kill yourself. To the point that I began to get a plan in my mind about how I was going to do it. And I remember getting a great big knife that we had. And I remember thinking I held it to my throat. And I thought to myself, this won't be hard. I'll just slit my throat. And, and, and I'll, I'll bleed, I'll die, and it'll be over with, and I'll be able to go on. You're not worth it. Kill yourself. So two times I held a knife to my throat. I think the prayers of a godly family, I think being in the church, I think God had mercy and grace and spared me. And being 11 years old and thinking I was slick, I went to my dad and said, Hey, Dad, have you ever, you know, you ever held a knife to your throat and thought about killing yourself and ended it all, you know? Dad panicked, right? (laughs) As you should. Dad, they said, you got to go to counseling, right? So they took me to a good, godly Christian counselor, met with a guy, talked to the guy, and and we hit it off. We're talking and everything. A couple weeks go by, and he says to me, Jeremy, I don't think that you're a Christian. I mean, you talk about reading your Bible and and seeing this stuff at church, but you don't read the Bible at home. You don't desire to read it. You don't want to pray. You don't like doing these things. You go to church because that's what you do. You say you believe in Jesus, but Jesus doesn't change you. There's not, there's not been a moment. Where, where would you say, do you think that you're really a Christian? Are you really born again? He said that to me. And in that moment, I felt God soften my heart. All of a sudden, it's like Jesus was knocking at the door of my heart. And I began to melt and I began to cry. But that old anger rose up again. And I looked at him. I'm sobbing. I'm crying. I feel just so distraught. I knew in that moment Jesus was knocking on the door of my heart. And I said, I hate you and I never want to see you again. How dare you say I'm not a Christian? Got up out of his office and I walked out and I told my parents, I hate that man. I never want to see him again. And they didn't make me go back. But from that point forward, I began to get miserable 
in my life. I'm talking about misery that I had not known. I mean, it's like when I ate food, it's like it had lost all its flavor. It's like trying to enjoy some experience, like being near the ocean, and you can't smell the salt on the sea. I was miserable. And because of that misery, I began to just get worse. I got all these voices in my head. I got all this anger going on the inside, and I am consciously decided I am not letting Jesus in. I don't want to do that. I don't want to say, yeah, I don't want to do this. And I am miserable. The time goes on. I turned 12. Our family went on vacation like good families do. My parents had a condo and timeshare in Indian Harbor Beach. We go there to the beach, and I'm just miserable at the beach. And I was there, and we get there the first day, and they said, come on, Jeremy, let's go down to the beach. We're all going. And I said, I don't want to go. I don't even want to go down to the beach. Just leave me alone. So they, they, by that time, they were tired of fighting with me, right? I said, fine, let him alone. So they left me there in the condo. They all went down there having a good time. It's vacation. They're going out to eat. They're doing stuff. I just stayed in the condo and sulked for two days. I don't want to be here. I don't want to live. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm done. And as I'm there sulking in there in the condo, I started flipping through. Now, this is a blast from the past, all right? But, but there are these things called CDs. Anybody? No CD? Who's of the CD generation, right? CD? All right, put your hand down. Uh, so if you're before the CD generation, this is what came after cassettes, right? If you still got cassettes at your house, things came afterwards called CDs. If you don't know what a CD is, this is before the iPod and the iPhone, okay? All right, just so we're here. I'm in the middle. I'm in the CD generation. We used to have the one, it was like a little portable CD player, but you couldn't hold it sideways or it wouldn't work. You had to hold it just flat, and if you bumped it in the car, bump, 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 right, and the whole thing mess up. Okay, so and we had the big headphone, not the Beats, but like the, you know what I'm saying, the bad, they didn't work good, no AirPods, we didn't think of that then. Had to have the outside headphones. So I'm listening to the music, and, and we had Christian music and stuff. We had, you had to have a CD case, okay, with, we flipped through all the different CDs, and he had a little pouches because you scratch it up, it wouldn't work. It was a different time. Okay, so I'm listening to the CDs one by one. I'm sitting in the condo. I'm sulking. Of course, I'm not doing anything all day. So the family comes in. They go to sleep. The girls have a room. My parents have a room. My brother and I are on the pull-out sofa, right? Because that's what happens when you're the brothers, right? You get the pull-out sofa. So my brother's snoring away. He's asleep. Everybody's asleep. I'm still listening to CDs, sulking, angry. The night is growing late. I don't know what it was, midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning, I'm still flipping through CDs, pop one in, listen to it all the way, pull it out, put in another one. <clears throat> Eventually, I get down to, like the second to last CD is a, a woman who is preaching a sermon. Thank God for women preachers, right? So I'm there, I put in this CD, and this woman starts preaching. I don't remember what the message was about. I don't even think I wanted to listen to it necessarily. I think I was just, it was like I needed something. So I put in this CD, and this woman's preaching, and she says this, and it grabs me. She says, if people who don't serve God are miserable, and if you're miserable right now, you need to get saved. You need to get born again. And it all came flooding back to me. And I realized I grew up in church. Had a Christian family, knew how to do that. I had prayed many times. We prayed the prayer on Sunday. I knew what I needed to do. And I realized in that moment again, I am not a Christian. I am making a choice for this to be my life. And all of a sudden, there it was again. Jesus knocking on the door of my heart. And I knew in that moment, I have a chance. I have a choice right here. The last time I had fought it off. But this time I let him in. And it's like, I, I just, I begin to weep. And I got up out of the room. My brother's snoring on the pull-out couch. I got to see it. I go to the little kitchen thing in the condo. I lean over the table. It's glass. I can still see it. And I lean over the table, and I say, Jesus, you can, if you want me, you can have me. Please forgive me of my sin. Lord, come into my life. Save me, Jesus. And I said, I said to him, I said, Lord, I'm not ever saying, I'm not even saying that I'm going to get it all right because I think I'm still going to sin again. But when I do, I'm going to still live for you. And I'm going to ask for forgiveness and I'm going to keep going. And all of a sudden, whew, peace, peace flooded over me. I, I went to sleep, went right to sleep. I got up the next day. 
And I thought, I need to get my a Bible. I didn't even bring a Bible. I had to go get my mom's Bible. I said, Mom, let me have your Bible. I want to read some Bible that morning. Read some Bible. And the family said, we're going down to the beach. And I said, let's go. I want to go. I want to be a part. I want to be in this. Why? Because in that moment, everything changed. That woundedness, you're not enough. You're weird. You're strange. You're healed. Healed. That anger, that open door to the devil, closed. Those voices gone. Now, I'm not saying I didn't have habits of sin and bad things I still needed to work out, still had habits I had to conquer, right? Just like everybody does. But everything changed when I gave my life to Jesus. And listen, the passion that's on the inside of me comes because of two things, I think. Number one, I know what it's like to be miserable and trapped. I know what it's like to have voices and not want to live anymore. And number two, I know what Jesus can do. I know what the power of the Holy Spirit can do when he gets a hold of you. And I want to read you this verse. I've been referring to it today. I want you to look at it with me on the screen. Revelation 3.20, as our band comes back. Jesus said, look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, you got to open the door. You heard me say it earlier. You can keep the door closed as long as you want. You got free will. You got choice. You can keep the door closed. If you open it, though, I will come in and we will share a meal together as friends. Jesus wants to be your friend. So many times in our life, we, we close the door to Jesus. Or we put up fences and walls. Wall off a part of our heart. Jesus, you can have me, but not this part over here. God, I, I want to live for you, but I want it to be in the zoo, not in the wild. I want to live for you on my terms. I want to live for you so long as I can have an ice cream and know that I'm safe. I'll live for you, God, but it's got to be in the zoo. Can I tell you today, Jesus is calling you out to the open plains. Can I tell you that Jesus is calling you out and saying, when you say yes to me, you're saying, yes, God, I believe you, I trust you, but that's where the assurances stop, and you're saying, I'm going to go forward for Jesus. See, I heard it said like this one time, and it's true. When I got saved, it's like there was a big contract, and at the top of it, it said, God's plan for my life, and it was blank because I don't know what it is. But when I got to the bottom, I signed it and said, I agree to your plan for my life, even though I don't know it all yet. And if that means I got to go out, and it is, I got to go out past the zoo. I got to go past my comfort zone. I got to go past where I'm comfortable and where I've got one foot in the world and one foot in sin and one foot here. And I'm trying to just manage. And God, I want to also be a Christian a little bit too. No, I've got to go all in, all out on the open plains. It's not safe anymore. I got to go all in for Jesus. That's what he's looking for. But this is our condition. Jesus said it, Revelation 2, 4. Look at it. But I have this against you, church. This is what Jesus says. He's talking to the church. He says, you have abandoned the passionate love you had for me at the beginning. He said, there was a time when you were like that. When you woke up every day and your heart beat for Jesus. And you said, I got to be more like Jesus to God. What do you want from me? I'm on the open plane. I'm all the way. God, I'm going. I'm ready. I'm going to do. I'm all in. But little by little, begin to back away. No, I can't do that. Put up a fence here. Make a choice there. Pavement here. And you find yourself today numb. And you remember what it was like to be on that open plains. Wow. And if you look around your life right now, you know you're in the zoo. Today, I want to tell you that God wants to radically, passionately change your life for the better. Whether you're in here today and you say, I don't know Jesus and you need to get to know him. Or whether you say, I have grown numb. I've grown cold in my love for God. I still, I want to say, Jesus, yes. I, I would say yes to Jesus. I've said yes. I've had an encounter. I remember what it was like at one point, but I'm in the zoo. I realize that there's an area of my life. And God, I need to go all in. I want to go passionately after you. I've got to follow you. It's got to be all or nothing, God. And I know I'm not there today. 
the Holy Spirit laid this on my heart. We're going to do it different today. Just a good old-fashioned altar call. Just come to the altar. Because the Lord just dealt with my heart. said, look, if they'll get out of their seat, I'm knocking. He said, if they'll get out of their seat, they'll open the door and I'll come in. And Jesus will change you. So whether today you say, I need to get saved, I need to get born again, I need to get right with God, or whether you just say, I've grown cold, doesn't mean you're not a Christian, but it means that you know there's a place where you've grown cold. The Holy Spirit wanted me to give you an opportunity today to make a change, to make a difference, to come down and say, Jesus, I open the door more fully than ever before. I'm not fencing anything off. There's no asterisks. There's no if, ands, or buts. God, you can have me fully. I recommit today to say, God, I will go passionately after you all of my days. This is going to be a marker. This is going to be one of those places where I know I'm on the open plains and not in the zoo anymore at this altar today. So I want to give you an opportunity. We've got time for this. We've set it aside so that today you can come and seek the Lord. And our prayer team will come and pray for you as well. I want to invite you, if you would like to come and receive prayer, I want you to bow your head. I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to invite you forward. Father, I pray that today if anyone desires Jesus, desires to go further, desires to go higher or further or deeper, God, that they've got the, the courage to step out of their seat and come forward. I pray, God, if there's any that don't know you, that they've got the courage to step forward and say yes to Jesus today, to the open door that Jesus has laid before them. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to count to three, and I want to invite you to come forward. One, Father, we trust you. Two, Jesus is calling. Three, I want you to get out of your seat and come forward today if you would like to receive prayer. If you say, I know I've got to make it right with God. I need more passion. i got to get out of the zoo and i got to move forward. I want to invite you to come forward right now. Come seek the Lord while he can be found today. I believe this is a moment. There's not moments like this every day. God don't always this, not always like this. The Holy Spirit's not always in it like this. I want to encourage you to come. This can be a moment. Today this is an altar. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, stand up with me. If you're not coming forward, I want you to stand to your feet. God, reawaken us to a reality of your presence and your love. Return us to our first love, Jesus, where you're all that matters, where we wake up every day passionate for you. God, where the Holy Spirit fire in us is unquenchable. Jesus, where we know that we know that we know that we are on mission and on point for you in Jesus' name. God, I pray fresh waves of impartation would sweep across this place today. Lord, that there would be an awakening to your presence in Jesus' name. Lead us, Logan. Looking for perfection There's no need in me pretending I'll give you everything I'll give you everything Come on, cry out to God You deserve my full attention Nothing less than my devotion Oh, speak to me, speak to me, and I will listen. I'll give you everything, I'll give you everything. Oh, 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 you can have my heart, you can have my heart. Oh, 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 oh,
You know, it's important that we have a heart change, that we make our mind up to follow Christ, to do what he calls to do. Obviously, we need to do that. But I think sometimes in the church, if we're not careful, we'll, we'll stand in a moment like this and we'll make a mental ascent. Yeah, okay, I'm going to change now. But I want you to know, I believe there's a direct word from God for us today that we need to take a step to launch into the deeper place, to go where God wants us to go. And sometimes I've been in those services. Well, if I go forward, somebody's going to think something or somebody's going to do something. I want you to know today, I think it's more important than ever that we step out and do what God's called us to do. There's going to be a breakthrough, a release that takes place. This is going to take us to a place maybe we need to get back to. Maybe it's a place you've never been. Right now is your opportunity. So our team is going to be here. When we dismiss in a few minutes, they're going to be here. But I encourage you at any moment, come on, they'll be here to pray with you. It doesn't matter if it's your first time or you're, or you're just trying to get some things straightened out. God is dealing with hearts. And you need a breakthrough. You need to go to that next place. This is your opportunity. We want to be here for you. We're prayed that We're ready. We're excited about this. I'm thankful for our team. You know, several years ago, uh, God began to do this. Over 20 years ago, uh, we began to talk about the need to really take time. And, and, and I did that, but I was so so busy all the time it's hard to find a time when we could really get ready for the year so we just made a concerted effort to say okay in january pastor we want you to just take time off just hear from god get direction uh, even more than ever so we begin to in fact we didn't have a staff so we had to bring in spe special guest speakers and all that i'm thankful now the only one we still bring in all the time is ken blunt he's kind of like part of our staff because he's like family but to have our team do this, it helps me as a lead pastor, but it does my heart good to know that God's leading us and he's directing us. So I'm thankful for that word, and I believe we've heard from God today. Amen? And I believe God is challenging us. I really do believe this is our best year ever. I believe that with all my heart. I believe we're about to go into a place we've never been. We're about to see greater things as we go deeper. It's going to get bigger. It's going to get better. We're going to see more people saved this year. I believe we're going to see more people turned on for Christ. I believe we're going to reach our families and our neighborhoods, and that's what we're praying for. And I want to encourage you, if you haven't fasted, you say, I don't know about this fasting thing, or it, you know, the enemy's telling you it's too late. You still have time. We have three more days. We're going to break out. You can fast anytime, but as a church, we're fasting right now. We did a 10-day fast. Some people are, are fasting certain things, giving up a meal a day, or some people are taking days of fasting. But I want to encourage you to get in on this until Wednesday night, and we're going to pray Wednesday night together. We're having our classes for kids. We're having our youth will be meeting. We're right here. The rest of us are going to gather, and we're going to pray and seek God's face because we need to hear from God. We cannot keep waiting around for something to happen. we got to launch out into what God has for us. Can somebody say amen? So I encourage you, don't stay home. The most important thing we're going to do this week is pray. So I encourage you to be here. I promise you won't be disappointed. We want to see your face here, bring your family, and let's see God do something great. And I believe as we begin to seek his face, he said, if you seek me, you'll find me. Amen? How many are to see God move? Come on, you really ready to see God move? Well, as somebody once said, it works for church too. Put your money where your mouth is or put your actions where your words are. Come on. So let's do that this week. Don't forget about new money. Let me just mention very quickly, we're going to dismiss you and we'll, the altars are open. If you, you know, don't get caught up just in the tongues thing. We will explain that, but the work of the Holy Spirit is so much more than just speaking in tongues. So don't freak out over that. We believe the Spirit of God wants to move in our life, wants to use our many gifts of the Spirit. We're going to talk about that. That's really what Numa is about. It's like the school of the Holy Spirit. Just check it out. We're not going to make anybody speak in tongues. We've never done that. But we've seen God do some tremendous things. It doesn't cost anything. If you sign up today, as I said, we'll give you a free book. We'll even pay for your lunch and all that stuff this, this coming Saturday. We believe it's going to be a great time. Would you raise your hands right now? And let's just pray together. Father, we thank you. Lord, we want more. We want to go deeper. We want to go farther. We want to go bigger. We want to go all in, Lord Jesus, because we believe the time is short. We believe that we have family members that need to turn to you now because we don't know what the future holds. We have, we have friends. We have coworkers. Lord God, that we don't know what tomorrow holds for them. And so we want to reach them. And God, we, we need to go deeper ourselves so we can be ready to be used of you in a mighty way, Lord. 
God, that we, we will get busy for the kingdom. And Lord, we'll not just be people who go to church, but we want to be people who make a difference as we go into the world and see people change in our city, our region, our nation, and the rest of our world. As we live for you, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. In the name of Jesus, would you say a great big amen? Amen. God bless you. Aren't you glad? If you're glad you came to God's house, let's give him a shout of praise right now. Hallelujah. As you're dismissed and you go out this direction, if you want prayer, if God's still tugging, come on. Don't miss this opportunity. You come forward as the rest of us are dismissed. Don't forget to stop by and get your free book. Sign up for new. But God bless you. We'll see you Wednesday night. Let's seek God together. Thanks for joining us today, and we hope you'll tune in next time. If you want more information, about Praise Family Church, or if you think you might like to visit us sometimes, you can find out a lot of information at praisefamily.church. Maybe you'd like to partner with us to make these broadcasts possible. You can text the word GIVING to 313131, or you can mail an offering to the address you see on the screen. But whatever you do, we want to continue to be a blessing to you, we want to be a help to you, and we want to let you see that God has got great things in store for you, and He has a plan for your life. We hope you'll continue to tune in and you'll be a part as Praise Family Church continues to tell the good news around the world.